So as you know, uh, maybe you didn't know, I serve uh, as a executive member of our um, board in California Southern Baptist Convention. Oh, what a long title. <laughs> so we actually passed the budget uh, of um, $500,000 to collect in terms of the, the CMO offering through the, I don't know, uh, 2,000 churches that we have in California. So um, there was a little bit of opposition because last year we only got like 470,000. And one guy said like, uh, I believe in math. And then, you know, <laughs> but all of us, we were, you know, kind of saying, okay, you know, we need more money. And, and I don't know if you heard, but it says, how many churches that we need? 70,000? You know how they got that, right? 35 million people unchurched, right? And if we have one church that reaches 500, which is like mega church in California standard, right? Because the most of the churches in California or even the United States is less than 100, right? So even one church that can host maybe 500 people, and we need 70,000 of those to reach 35 million. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just do the math. And so, it's, you know, so hopefully, maybe God will call some of you guys to plant churches. We have three seminarians, wow. right? So maybe God will call you to plant churches in difficult places, where, and then we'll sponsor you as a church as well. So, um, so when you give, you know, maybe in your check, you can write CMO or an envelope. And so we make sure that money goes to the right place. And 100% will stay in California to do the mission work in California. And, and all this money we give, like at our church and stuff, lots of money goes to all over the world, including uh, uh, in the United States as, as well, too. So one of these days, I will share more about that. Um, so today, turn your Bibles to... Uh, Philippians chapter 4. Finally, we're ending it today. Praise the Lord. I don't know how long it's been, uh, but just taking my sweet time and like, uh, yeah, you know, it, rather than speaking from 10 verses, uh, let's talk, pick one verse, you know, and, and um, Corey always comes up to me, yeah, pastor, it's amazing how you just take that one verse and can talk about it for 40 minutes, you know, uh, or oh, you mean 45 minutes because I never cut short, you know, uh, um, but, but yes, today we're going to pick four verses, we're going to end it, and I'm going to talk about house church, maybe next few weeks, uh, then I'm going to start talking about book of Hebrews, yeah, and um, Tammy requested that, and she was the only one who requested, so she wins, you know, so, hey, you know, Hallelujah. yeah, so let's, um, let me read the first verse, and y you guys can read the next two verses, then I will read the last verse, okay, read the instruction very well, okay, I'll read the first one, you read the next two, then I'll read the the final verse. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus, the brothers who are in need of you. All the saints greet you, especially those who see his household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Yeah. And as you next slide, please. As you as you look into these things like deeply, right? Kind of focusing on these four verses. And I think the, the three points, it just kind of emerges out of it, right? And, and one of my seminary professors, the preaching professor says, to, you know, because we grew up Baptist in some of us, and, you know, it's always three points and a poem and in the service, right? But you got to let the text tell you how many points that you got, right? You don't just make up points when the text is not, you know, making the points. So, and you, and you look at it, 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 it seems to tell us the three things that we need to focus on which is the first verse talks about the glory of the Father, right? And next two verses is like the word greeting happens again and again, right? And whenever you see the oh, same word happens again and again, that's the emphasis of it. And who do you greet? It's about relationships, right? And the third verse talking about the grace of the Lord, Jesus Christ being with us all. So let's talk about those three things, three focuses that we want to do, right, to do. The first one is God's glory. Second one is the relationships that God has given us. And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that how much we need of that. So first point, the focusing on the God's glory. Right? And sometimes people ask me a lot, so pastor, what is the glory of God? We talk about you know, giving God the glory. What, what does it mean? Right? Do you just write the word glory and we just kind of give to him like a check or something? Like, you know, what, what is that? Giving glory to the Lord. You know, Bible says, whether you eat or drink, Whatever you do, do it for the glory of God, right? What does that really mean, right? And so, 
the Isaiah 6 3, it gives us a, a, a glimpse of what that is like. Right? Because Isaiah 6 3, Isaiah is given a, a view of a throne room, right? And, and there's God and, and, and the things are happening, and this is what is written. <coughs> holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Right? So God's holiness is being filled in that place. And the whole earth is full of his glory. Right? And so the relationship is that is that in God's holiness, which is invisible, right? Which God's character, which is invisible. But the whole earth in his creation, in in his act, that we get to see all of his glory. Right? And so holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The earth is a display of God's perfection, God's power, and God's qualities, and God's divine nature that we cannot see the holiness by ourselves, but through his character, we get to see the creation where we get to see God's glory. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so the holiness is God's character, God's, God's divine, um, uh, who he is, and how he does things, right? How he acts, how he interacts with people. And the results of that is the glory that we get to see. So glory simply is a display of God's holiness, God's divineness, God's perfection, God's character, God's power, God's qualities, and God's attributes, and God's divine nature. And, and, and how long do we get to do this? Right? And, and that's what Paul is saying. Paul has written this beautiful four chapter. I mean, he didn't have char- chapter markers. But this beautiful chapter, and in the way that he ending, is not saying, okay, goodbye. But he's kind of capping it with why we do all the things that we do. Why he has written this beautiful letter to church in Philippi. Why is he thanking them? Why is he glorying in them? Why is he experiencing this pure joy because of his relationship with them? And the reason is, is for God's glory. And he's telling us all that. Right? He's telling us the focus point is that the rather we eat or drink, whatever we do, whether we write or whether we read, or will we be gathered together in the name of Christ and do all these things? We want to do it for the glory of God. Amen. And then when do we get to do that? When do we get to stop? Or, or how long do we to do it? Right? Because, you know, we are a little bit of exact people. Right? When God gives us an instru- instruction, we say, okay, Lord, when do we do this? And when do we need to stop? Or uh, uh, what's the, give us a clear instruction. Yeah. Whenever my wife tells me to go buy something at the supermarket or Home Depot, I'm dreading. You know why? Because I may get the wrong thing, right? I'm thank you know, goodness for the phone, so I can call her Henry. You know, take me a picture so I can exactly know. The, the 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 reason I feel like that is because I was shocked by my sister. You know, my sister is super clean, and uh, I I lived with her for a long time, and she told me. Hey, Youngsu, can you go buy me a bread? This is a long time ago when they didn't have cell phones, right? She, and, and I said, okay. I went to the supermarket. I bought a bread, right, or roll of bread. I came back, and she said, this is not the bread that I wanted. And I had to go back. <laughs> right? And, and ever since then, I'm kind of shocked. Right? And so I'm kind of, you know, like traumatized. And so I want to make sure. And so whenever I read stuff verses like this, I say, okay, Lord, you know, those... 5, W, and 1, H, that kind of goes through my mind. Okay, when, why, where, who, you know, right? Those, when you write English, you know, it's like those kind of things. And, and when are we to do this, right? It's forever and ever. Amen. And, and that's what we're created for. God, God made us because of that. Right? Just like the world, the, the earth and the creation and the universe displays God's holiness, God's perfection as being who God has created to us and we ought to, just like the world, just like the animals, just like the everything else in this world, they glorify God and we ought to join, right? join this bandwagon and start doing of glorifying God rather than glorifying ourselves. You know, I read somewhere, it says, humans are the only ones who has a choice 
right, who don't, don't want to glorify God, but everything else glorifies God. When you see wow. geese flying in a V formation and how they rotate the leadership, have you ever seen that? Yeah. You see that, you go, wow! Yeah. Yeah. You know? And any animals or, or, or you know, this, it just yeah. amazes us. The planet Earth or whatever those videos you watch, you definitely get to see the glory of God being displayed. So who? Who, who, who are to do this? Us! It's, it's, it's pointing to us. It's encouraging us. It's challenging us to do it. When? It's, it's whenever. Whether you're even sleeping, he said, you know, Lord, when I sleep, help me to you know, get good dreams that glorifies you. Hallelujah. Even, even my sleep talking, Lord, may not they say dumb things, you know, or, or may say something, something super cool. Something cool about you. Or about your love or your grace. So, you know, when you go to camp or something and people are like, what's this guy speaking? Oh, he's speaking the gospel or something, you know? <laughs> Wherever, whenever that we have an opportunity to do it. Where? Wherever you go. Even in your workplaces. Even in places that you go. Right? Right? Farmer's market. Or you go to work. I know some of you guys graduated. You guys go into workplaces. Yeah, wherever you go, we have to play, you know, uh, bring glory to the Lord. What, what is it? Yeah, glory to the Lord. Displaying God's holiness. Amen. Displaying God's perfection. Displaying God's divine nature. And how do we do that? Or however. However, God challenges us. And why? Because, like, you know, Andrew pray. He's the only one who is worthy of our praise. True. He's the only one that we ought to glorify. Mm -hmm. Because everything else is way, way, way low, second place. And we ought to bring glory to the Lord. We have been created to do this. And we rebelled. And Jesus came and did this to show us how. Right? So when in question, you ask Jesus, you ask, you read the scripture and you read the gospel and say, how did Jesus bring glory to the Lord? Right? And he died to redeem us and to give us this life, this new life in him. Not just to do the old things again, but this new life God has given us to do the new things, which is to bring glory to the Lord. Hey, brothers and sisters, we get to do this. Right. Amen. We right. get to do this. It's a privilege for us to do it. Right. Right? right? Just imagine you drove up to Palo Alto or Los Altos Hills, then you ring the doorbell of Mark, the special Mark, you know, that we all know, that we're always on, right? And say, hey, Mark, I want to glorify your company. Please hire me. You know, you will get security guarded, you know, and then you're going to end up in jail or something like that, right? But how God has come, right? How God has given us this opportunity to glorify the Almighty God, who is none other than the Creator, the lover of our soul, the Redeemer, the mighty God. We've been called to do this. Wow. We've been called to do this. This is a calling that we have. It's not just as a pastor we're called, but all of us as a follower of Christ, we are called to glory God, Amen. to bring maximum glory to the Lord. Amen? Amen? So remember and focus on that. How can I do that? And even not doing the dumb things, right? Because when you do dumb things, it doesn't bring glory to the Lord. When we sin, we do not bring glory to the Lord. Amen? Yeah. And so we got to think. We have to choose. We have to pause. You know, when, when, when those opportunity comes to do good or to do evil, we have to think and pray and call your best buddies. You can call me. Pastor, I'm in this situation and I'm given this choice. I'm given those. What do you think I should do? Where are you? I'm coming over right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I sent Paul over, you know. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah, you know, we have to think about it in terms of where is our focus. Our focus must be bringing glory to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So this is important for all of us. We've been called to do this. We enjoy doing this. Do you enjoy doing that? Sure. Right? And when God's nature comes out of our, uh, of, of our life, the choices that we make and things that we said and the life that we have lived and you get to see the God's divine nature through that. Man, do you into enjoy that? Right? And God's love uh, impacts us and that love comes out of us and, and somehow, wow, that was really cool. Then we enjoy that we get to be used by God where God brings His glory through us. We pray that would happen. Amen? We pray that will happen in the students' lives, in the places that we go to work. We pray that it will happen all the days of our life. We pray that those things will happen in our kids' life. 
And however little they are, even Elijah's life, in the ways that he cries, in the ways that he plays with his friends, you know, in the playground, I don't know, right? We pray that our kids will, will be captured by that focus and, and live such a way. And we are satisfied in doing that, right? And, you know, we may do lots of cool things in life, but man, when God uses us to bring glory to him, right. we are satisfied. Right. Like, you know, remember when uh, at, at the well, uh, God bless you. Yeah, yeah at, at the well, right? And they were eating food, but then Jesus was hanging around with the woman at the well, right? And the and disciples came with the food, and and Jesus says, I, "I'm full, because my food is to do the will of God, which was to bring glory to Him." Remember that? Yeah, it's a strange satisfaction that we experience. Yeah, we glory in glorifying God. Amen. That's the first focus. Second focus is on relationships. Right, this two, next two verses, you get to see this word greet, 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 you know, right? And, and this greet is not like, hey, what's up? Uh, nothing much. You know, it's not like that, right? Because it's, it's in most Eastern countries, right, their greeting takes a while, right? You, sit, you, you stand or you sit and you say, oh, how, how are you doing? How's it going? How's your mom and dad? And like a whole, whole lineage comes out, right? Right? And you have to tell everything, did you eat? Did you sleep well? You know, it takes a long time to greet, right? And so this, um, this greeting, it, it, it talks to us in terms of how important those relationships are, right? Relationships are important. Right? And why do you think Zach, you know, just, you know, made an announcement of who he's dating? Uh, he's claiming Nora, right? And saying, right, right, in, in some sense, right? And I'm claiming Elaine, right? And, and uh, because as we made announcements about that uh, resource fair, you know, last year, Sarah was out there and she was talking to some dude for 20 minutes about our church and stuff. And, and later she realized the guy was picking up on him, on her, you know, like, you know, she was getting hit on. And then, you know, since Sarah was passionate about church and so that guy was just listening and like looking for opportunity, how, how can I get her phone number kind of thing, you know? Uh, so, you know, it happens and you gotta, you gotta, you know, so relationships are important, right? You know, and so, the, the, it, but the second word that you can, we want to emphasize is the word saints, right? And, and when we think about saints, it maybe is somebody who, who did something great for the Lord and they're dead. And we kind of canonize them or somehow, then we, okay, send somebody, you know, or, or like that. But it's talking about people who are called by God, who are Christians, basically. Because in Christ, that we are saint, right? And then in a way, that is our highest calling. And sometimes we think, oh, yeah, pastor is higher than saints. No, saint is the highest, right? And there's no other thing. And in that, we have different kind of categories or something, but saint is the highest. And so people in Philippi, he's calling saints. People who's with him, he's calling saints, right? Because he says, right here, greet every saint in Christ Jesus. So, so Paul's telling, you know, church in Philippi, all the people, saints over there, greet them, right? Greet them from us. And brothers who are with me greets you, you, you all. It's, right. it's not singular, it's plural, right? right? Right, Zach, you know how to tell the difference between singular and, and plural. He's taking Greek right now, so. <laughs> all the saints greetings you. So all the saints who are with me is greeting you all as well, especially those of Caesar's household. So there's three different kinds of relationship right here, right? And, and, and the first relationship is relationship among the saints. Right? How do we relate to them? Right? We greet them. Right? We want them to do well. We want them to we want to encourage them. We want them to continue to run the race, right? And we want to uh, you know pray for them. And however you can help in terms of how God is working in them, how God wants to uh, use them, and how God's will God's will needs to be realized in these people's lives, right? So having this kingdom mindset amongst brothers and sisters in Christ. Right? And so it's important for us. Yeah, we are God's family. Every time I go to our um, CSPC executive board meeting, our president or our chairman is a 40-year-old Thai guy. Right? And he is hilarious. He's so funny. Yeah. And everybody laughs. Even like this 80-year-old grandpa, grandma, who, but like, you know, 
And this guy is like, you know, sometimes I'm thinking, oh, he's like overdoing it, but he's so encouraging and so, so funny. And he always says, hey, we are what? And we say, we're family, you know, I'm the usually the loudest one now, you know, but uh, <laughs> we're family, you know, yeah, we're family of God. Amen. Do you agree with that? Yeah, we are purchased by blood of Jesus Christ for God to make us a family in Christ. Do you believe that? Sometimes I feel closer, more close to you than my blood family. You know? But in literally it makes sense because, right, you know, as a brother and sister in Christ, we're gonna spend eternity in heaven. Right? Yeah. So this is a family and, and knowing the father's will and carrying out the father's will for all the children that he has. He doesn't have any grandkids, he only has kids. Right? And in all the kids carrying on the Father's will to do, to encourage one another so that we can continue to be that happy family that God is continuing to, to making it. Amen. You know, our Father is up to something. Right? And that's why it says kingdom. There's a king and there's a domain and there's a relationship. Right? And as his domain, we have to understand what the Father is up to and to do the will of Father. What is the definition of success? Right? What? What? Making seven figures? No. Success is knowing what the Father wants you to do and doing it. That's success. Amen. Right? There's no other definition than that. The Bible says clearly, for we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We are God's workmanship. We're created in Christ Jesus to do good works. And as His family, there's plenty of good works for us to do. Yeah. And, and for us, yeah, we know God's wish for us is to make disciples. Amen? Amen. Gabby told us that a couple of weeks ago, right? Yeah, that's the, you know, making disciples. Get them saved and get them to grow in Jesus Christ. You know, as God says, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And if we love God and if we love the world, people in the world, not love the world, people in the world, what do we do? We give them Jesus. Amen. That's how God did it. Hallelujah. Yeah, and we got to give Jesus away as well. All of us becoming more like Jesus Christ, encouraging them, helping them to become more like Jesus. Relationship with one another. Relationship, right, is, uh, our relationship is based on our identity and position in Christ. Because he's talking about in Christ, right? And that's important, always placing ourselves in Christ being protected, being provided, being saturated by Christ, right? Being so overwhelmed by His presence and appropriating the gospel, even in our imperfection, needing of Jesus' blood, washing our sins. Yeah, you know, even you try to live as perfect life as you can because of our nature, we will fall, right? Then what do we need to do? We need to appropriate the gospel of Jesus Christ to know, that's right, it wasn't my good works, that got my right relationship with God, but it was Jesus' blood that washed my sins away. It was He who made a way for me to be right with God and how I need to constantly remind myself because what happened, right? As a, as a um, prodigal son's brother, Right? Sometimes we always have that prodigal son's brother. Oh, we got to just like, doesn't matter how you feel. You just kind of suck it up and say, do whatever, you know, and never experience God's transformation in our lives. But God is at work and God is, you know, transforming us and God is at, you know, doing a mighty work. And as we pro appropriate more of the gospel in our lives, we will become more like him. Mm -hmm. yeah. What you, you become, what you think of. And that's why in, in verse 10, talk about how we need to think about pure, right, love, and, 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 and a noble, those kind of things. Yeah. And the gospel, as we think about these things, as, as these things come more a, a part of our lives, and we will, we will overcome the gates of Hades. Right. And Jesus says, I will build my church and gates of Hades will not be able to overcome it. Right. And as we appropriate the gospel of Jesus Christ, His blood to us more and more, and we will, we will overcome the gates of Hades. And this world also needs that. Yes. Amen. And we need to be an agent of that. Without Christ, the Bible says that we can do nothing. Mm. Do you believe that? Yes. You know, why do we pray? Because we know we can do nothing. True. You know, and sometimes we're so arrogant, we think we can do everything. 
right? Why do we pray? We ask God, please come. Come and fill me with your power, with your spirit. And you need to do this in me and through me in order for you to accomplish your will. That's why we pray. So you think you're spiritual. People think they're spiritual and they're, you know, not praying and, you know, and be arrogant. They still don't know that verse. And I'm learning again and again. Right? And, and we're constantly learning about these things. And also, this new relationship developed as people are won over. Right? He mentions about Caesar's household. That's a big deal, right? Yeah. right? This is like a president's, you know, chief of staff or somebody. Right? And, that's a, and what Paul is saying, like, hey, we won all these, some of these guys over. Hallelujah. Now they're a Christian. We have a, our agent working in Caesar right now. You know? Yeah, he's our team. Yeah. Right? Our, our kingdom is expanding. That's exciting news. Right? Yeah. And Caesar's household, some of, you know, just imagine Paul being chained with a Roman soldier six hours in rotation. What do you think Paul did? Oh, what a weather, huh? Now, I was praying so much for the weather today because yesterday was over 100. And uh, today, hopefully, right, with, with this many people, man, we're going to get really hot. I'm going to kind of hot right now. But yeah, what do you think Paul did? He preached the gospel. Hallelujah. Right? Amen. Right? He did that. And somehow, through that relationship, some of Caesar's household got saved. Right. Wow, isn't that great? Beautiful. Isn't that great? And I think sometimes that, you know, uh, we, we do great, you know, other going to the kind of poor places and share the Christ. But this tells us if we cannot neglect those kind of the dignitaries as well. And when I was thinking about this, I was like, yeah, you know what? Who is our Caesar's household? Right. Right. You know? Maybe like Cal Poly professors. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, you Cal Poly students, I know maybe, you know, sometimes you're timid. Yeah, go to his office hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And I mean, I mean, they're paid to be there. So, you know, you have a captive audience like the Paul had captive audience for six hours, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right? And you go there and make sure nobody's there or whatever, you know? But yeah, share the gospel. Yeah. You know, I mean, when you have a chance to have dinner with high dignitaries, what would you talk about? Right? Yeah, maybe a little bit of weather, football, food, you know, maybe in the beginning. Yeah, you know, <laughs> invite them to house church, you know, have some games and stuff like that, of course. Right. Right? And share your testimonies or whatever it is, but we have to kind of think about, man, how we need to win them over for Christ. Because wow. God so loved the world, right? And God wants to give them eternal life so that they won't perish. Yeah, and that's important. And we have to rely on the Holy Spirit. I know we're shy. We're all shy. I guarantee you, there's no people more shy than me. And you raise your hand if you have a pee in your pants in school. And you got, because you're so shy, you're shy, you didn't ask the teacher that you go to the bathroom. Kindergarten. Kindergarten, okay, yeah, yeah. That counts. <laughs> yeah. So me and Zach, right, we're pretty sh shy. Yeah. And Bible says, when you are brought before the synagogue, rulers and authorities, do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or, or what to say. The Holy Spirit will teach you at the time what you should say. Yeah. And, and Bible says very clearly, but will, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Mm -hmm. Amen? Well, Holy Spirit in us will enable us to do that. How many of you guys experienced that? Amen. And I told you, when I did a series on the Holy Spirit, this is not an inferential. It's an experiential. Okay. And we need to learn this from our, our Pentecostal brothers. Yeah. Right? And don't be so Baptist in this thing. Oh yeah, you know, I receive Christ. And Bible says, when you receive Christ, Holy Spirit comes in us. Oh, therefore, Holy Spirit lives in me. Right? That's inferential. Experiential is like Holy Spirit lives in me. And I experienced it. Yeah. I was so shy and somehow God gave me words to say. Right? right? You know, those experiences that we need to have uh, as a follower of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And, 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 and shortly, briefly, I will talk about the third focus. Focus on the grace of God, uh, grace of the Lord Jesus Christ who lives in you uh, right, in, as His Spirit. Verse 23 says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, right? And this really tells me, right? It's asking me various different kind of questions. 
And the question is asking me, what do you really, really need? You know, really, not W-I-L-L-Y, but really, really. I don't know say really very much. My wife always makes fun of me. Yeah. <laughs> what you want? Uh, yeah. Really, okay, got it? What, what do you really, really need? <laughs> huh? Right? I'm trying really hard here. Re really, what do you really need? Yeah. What do you really need? Yeah. What, what, what do you really need? And he tells right here. We need grace. We need grace from our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he needs to grace us. Uh, he, he, the grace that He gives us needs to empower us. So grace is not just forgiveness, but it's empowerment. It's like fuel that God graces us. And that grace may not go in vain to do nothing, but somehow that grace will impact us and to carry on the will of our Father for the glory of God. We're grace all the time. Do you know that? We don't recognize it. God's grace gives us. His common grace, right? It just showers us all the time. Yes. The weather, the, you know, I go to a meeting in Fresno, right? and they say, oh, where are you from? I say, oh, I'm from uh, a pastor of a church in San Luis Obispo. And everybody says, oh, that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, well, you know, suffering for Jesus, man. What can I say, you know? Uh, because they're from Bakersfield and they're Fresno, you know. Sorry, uh, those of you who are Bakersfield. <laughs> uh, oh, that's why you guys are living here, right? You know, uh, Murphy. I mean, you know, but Murphy's nice. You know, it's a mountain area, so it's, it's beautiful. You know, uh, Delano. You know? Yeah, you know. And so, but it's grace, and not just talking about that, but even the breath that we took, this very last breath we took. Did you do anything? Did you did you create the air? You know, uh, you know how you're in pain sometimes? Uh, maybe you worked out too hard and you're sore in your core and you can't even breathe. And, and how that breath was so, like, so important. Uh, and man, how some people want to eat a bite or breathe without any pain. Right? And unless you have experienced that pain, you don't know how grateful you are. We think this is just all given. It's not. How God has graced us. I need to remember and be thankful and that grace be motivating in us, right? Returning to God in thanksgiving and in obedience, knowing that God wants best for us. Amen? God wants best for all. God's sovereign and God wants best for all and He's doing whatever He can to bring out the best. And He's challenging us today. Do not let the very grace go in vain, but let the grace be motivating in you. Let the grace change you. Let the grace transform you. Let the grace come out in worship, in thanksgiving and in obedience to bring glory unto the Lord. And that is the important message that God is giving us. And how do we respond? We respond of this unmeasured favor by thanksgiving and obedience. Right? And, and, and we want to live this life. And just imagine, right, as we focus on God's glory, right, just, just focusing on the relationship God has given us, relationship with one another as a family of God, then we get to come together and to worship and eat nice bibimbap, right? The best Korean restaurant in San Luis Obispo. Yeah. That's grace. Right? So, right? How we're placing in, in Christ that we are perfect positionally, but also we have all these people we need to win over. Why do you think God has placed you in Cal Poly, right? You know, and whether 18,000 people are not Christians and 2,000 people are, why do you think God did that? Why do you think God has placed us in San Luis Obispo? Right? To reach this 40,000 people that who do not know Christ. And we need to let that motivate us to do His perfect will. Amen. Uh, and just imagine what kind of life would that be? <laughs> Wouldn't that be a wonderful life? Amen? Yeah. Yeah, just imagine, you know, the vision of your life. Right? Yeah, just, just think about how your life will play out if we're focused on those three things. Yes, we will live the life of Christ. That is the life of Christ. And we desire so much for the life of Christ to be lived in us and lived through us. The life of Christ will be right, relived in us and through us. We bring more glory to the Lord. We get to glory in His glory. We get to right, find satisfaction and joy for what is the only thing that will last for eternity. And God is inviting us. And God is calling us 
to focus on those three things. Amen? Amen. Amen. Bow down with me. Would the ushers come forward? And let's focus on those three things. Of God's glory. God's display of His perfection and His holiness. And focus on relationship. Relationship with one another as a family of Christ. And relationship in Christ. How we are placed in Christ. How God's blood washes us, secures us forever and ever. In relationship with the VIPs, how we need to love upon them, how we need to pray for them, how we need to you know, buy them lunch or, or be loving towards them, right? And win them over for Christ. And focusing on God's grace, grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We thank you so much for this, this four verses that are so impactful in our lives to give us what we need to focus on. May your spirit who lives in us gives us insight and empowerment to live such a way for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all.
testimonies and stories about how you have been great gracious towards us Amen. and how you have shown your love for us. Well, may our words and our deeds um, and all of who we are um, truly declare um, for, for everyone around us to see how great you are, God. And though we recognize that none of this is possible um, without receiving that from you, without receiving your love. So, Lord, for for all of us um, who do not know that amazing, great love that you provide for us, um, how personal you are to each one of us, I pray that we that would they would be able to receive it, or we would be able to say yes and open our hearts and arms towards you, um, and to know and experience uh, Jesus, why we came and died on the cross for each one of us. So, would you help us to know um, how close you are? And may may we just reflect that back to you and to all all of the people around us that you place in our lives. Amen. 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 I would